Thank you for joining us today. While we have a quick study session, uh, we are having a study session about the new development happening on Warren and Telegraph. Um, I believe we have, uh, this was called here today by a, a resident who has wanted to voice his concerns. As you know, we here as the legislative body and these council chambers, we, we open up everything to everybody. You're more than welcome to speak your mind and your heart. Uh, Mr. Hakim reached out to me and said, I would like to speak before the council. And so, uh, Mr. Hakim, we have a city council meeting that starts at 6. I also want you guys to keep in mind, for those at home and those who are on Zoom, my Zoom is not up yet, but if Madam Clerk lets me in because I was late and I just put it in, I'm going to launch the meeting. But if you can see here, he has given us um, a booklet with the proposal, and it seems like uh, he's going to read us and walk us through this. It might take about two hours, but I'm sure Mr. Hakim can get it done a lot faster. Mr. Hakim, the floor is yours. Is there anybody in particular uh, that you want to have here? No. Um, because I could tell you we have our corporation council here. We have our, uh, our clerk and uh, six of our city council members. Councilman uh, once so did reach out to me. His wife is uh, just facing a little bit of complications, so he will be out for today. Uh, count, council Chair? Um, is, what's his name here? Is, is, is our IT director here? It's uh, update. Yeah, it was pretty fast though. I, I just did. What's the, what's the meeting ID? You don't need a meeting ID. What is it? A25. Wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, no, you don't. He's right. This is 10. Exit. 825. Uh, either way, uh, please go ahead and continue. Uh, Council Chair, if I, if I may, before we start, um, I, we have been sued by uh, Chillbox. I just want to make sure, this, um, which is a gas station up the street from, I think, a car wash that this gentleman owns. I just want to make sure we don't discuss... If, that's, if that involves that individual, I don't know who owns these two properties, but I want to make, let, make sure that we don't discuss any one that is involved in a litigation with, with the city of Dearborn Heights. So as long as we keep the parameters and you're aware, because other people may be added as defendants to this lawsuit, including because that, that lawsuit involves planning commission decision on and an appeal the zoning board. Um, I just want to make sure, and involves maybe some property you may own. I just want to make sure it doesn't get into that. So, area Mr. Thank you, Roger. That, or address that plaintiff, sir. Yeah, thank you, Roger. So, what the corporation council is saying, refrain from using anybody's name. Well, I just want to put well, on the record, Roger, I did send you an email and said any lawsuits that concern the property at 6539 Telegraph, we should be given notice so we could third party in. Have you given us notice if it involves the property? That's not my decision. That's the MMRMA. As you know, there are different defenses, including uh, adding necessary parties to lawsuit, but I'm not going to discuss that. I'm not saying that add. We have I, a, can, I can third party I, I'm, I'm in not, if it involves I, my I'm, property. You, you can do that, but that doesn't involve... Yeah, but I don't have any notice that, of anything. You, that's up to MMRMA to decide a strategy and which way they're going to handle it. I'm just putting that. on the record right now. Appreciate I it. sent you an email specifically telling you any lawsuits that concern Tony's car wash you need to give me notice like a third party in. No, because you send me an email doesn't mean I have to act on your email that way. I you acted on your email. Sir, I'm you, talking. You had I acted on your oh, email by forwarding it to the necessary Roger, let's, lawyers, let's, let's, and the let's, lawyers let's, will speak to you if that's necessary. Okay, right. let's, just, let's just go ahead and, and then, Hakeem, just right. refrain from using anybody's name. Roger oh. feels as he's an attorney, he's a grown man, he's an adult. If he feels he doesn't want to give you any information well, after I you mean, request Council it. Council President, it, I, I get blindsided with this information that nobody's, I don't know if even the city I, I council. have no idea. I, well, none of us here, I mean, I don't know. I can't speak to anybody else, but he's not told us anything. You, anyway. you know, I, I looked at the, the agenda item. I didn't see this on the agenda. I looked with the mayor. We we're trying to find exactly what you would be if you were here talking about this. I didn't see it. But as I stated, when there's a lawyer involved, we don't make the decisions. 
The attorneys make the decision for us because the insurance carrier covers us. So I would not communicate with you as you may be a necessary party or you may be added. That depends on the lawyers who are representing you, but we don't, I don't communicate with you on that. If it has anything to do with the appeal and the, and the approval of that car wash, you guys can easily enter into a consent agreement which then affects me. So absolutely, I no, it, no, it does not come easily without the approval of our lawyers. I, number I one, I disagree with you. Number I'm not two, argue. it's the I'm zoning here. board, no, sir. I'm not argue Guys, point of order. This is a study session about what development is happening at One Telegraph. I'm not here to hear either the, either uh, Mr. Fakori or from Roger to sit here and going back and forth. Yes. Mr. Fakori, please, okay. you have uh, just a little under 25 minutes. Thank you, Council President, uh, City Council members. I appreciate the opportunity. My job is to bring... And please to, speak into the mic a little bit. My job is to bring to your awareness of, of concerns that I have as a business owner um, in the city of Dearborn Heights. So I, I put together something, uh, a chain of facts here with exhibits supporting the concerns that I have that I want to go through and memorialize for the city council on the record. Um, there is building that's going on at the corner of Warren and Telegraph. I don't have specific, this is information that I've gathered. Um, I believe it's 100% factual. That's something that the city council can double check and see. But my understanding is 2405 Warren and 7015 Mayburn is the property that's being developed right now. This is a property uh, that is currently owned by IZ Properties LLC, who is Ahmad Busa, uh, the owner of IB Electric. Um, my understanding that there has been no change in that ownership uh, up to last week when uh, I pulled title work. Mr. Busa, my understanding from the city of Dearborn, record, Dearborn Heights Records submitted a proposal to planning three years ago uh, to vacate the alley and to construct a gas station there. Um, if you look at exhibit one. What page is exhibit one on? It's the fourth page. Okay. This is a email back from the city attorney where I'm asking the city attorney on the record, how long is an approval good for? And he responds that the good, uh, an approval by a board is good for one year from the date of the approval of the minutes. It's been three years since there's been any approval on that property, yet he was issued a permit. If you turn to the next page, Exhibit 2, Exhibit 2, is an email between, exchange between me and the building and safety director, Rick Wetland, uh, asking him if permits have been issued. And he said, yes, the permit was issued in 2023, pending clarification from the state. Um, so obviously there's construction going on. So he was, he was given a green light by the building safety to build. Building and engineering. Uh, okay. Um, many may know that, um, and I have a on Exhibit 3, which is the next page, Tony's Car Wash uh, submitted for approval for fueling pumps in the parking lot uh, and was approved by going through the process of uh, applying for the, the planning board, uh, and the minutes were approved uh, about 60 days ago. Um, this came obviously with heavy opposition from the owners um, of other properties, um, and I wanted, I'll, I'll touch base a little bit later on the con concern of one of the board members. And I'm going to try to just flush everything out before I was just moving forward and not um, worrying about uh, things that had happened. Uh, but now I think I need to detail things: what happened and 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 why they how they could happen. Um, on June 4th, 2024, uh, board member, council board member, um, the council had approved for a moratorium on car washes and gas stations. 
That's the permitting and issuing of any permits. So somehow, some way, a permit was released in 2024 after the moratorium was in place. So this was a question that was posed to uh, the building department with no response, which made me further investigate. I also want to bring to the council's attention that Abudi Beydoun and Ali Bazi somehow, some way, applied with the Zoning Board of Appeals on my application asking for the application to be overturned. They, are no, they were not property owners and they were not the applicants, but yet the city accepted the application and allowed the process to move forward. Fortunately, the Zoning Board attorney made it very clear that they had no standings in the appeal, but yet I had to go through that all that uh, process and of course um, my attorney had to submit a FOIA to try to get a notice of what was going on because we had no idea. We actually heard it from an, a resident who came to us at the car wash and told my son. Um, the application for the zoning board is the exhibit five. And I'd like you to turn to exhibit five, if you may, if you can. How in God's name, somebody who is not a property owner, who wasn't the appellant? What page is exhibit five on? I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'm sorry, okay, Council exhibit President, four. I didn't number these pages. Okay. So as if he had standings, as if he's a property owner, as if he was the applicant for the board, the city accepted these zoning board appeals. I don't know how, but they were done. I mean, I, I asked with no response. I, I'm not an expert on the charter, but I don't know. Maybe the charter allowed, I, and I, again, I don't know. I'm just trying to kind of like maybe get the understanding of the city and the administration. Maybe the charter allows for an opposing. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Madam Clerk, would you know that? What's your, Do you sorry. know if the charter allows for any random individual or member of the community to go and oppose and go before the ZBA? The ZBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Commission have their own rules, their own lawyers. That does not involve us here. They're separate. And, and since 2007, when we changed it away and took the decision away from the council, and uh, I guess uh, Paletko was the, and Miyake had put that together back in 2007. Therefore, it should not involve us. That's totally the lawyers and the decision of the Planning Commission, and then it goes to the, the Zoning Board. I thought Councilman, Councilman Muscat, so, excuse me, Roger, no also problem. brought it back so that any special land use, uh -huh. or special land use comes before the City Council. Yes, well, Councilman Muscat put that, and that unanimously passed. Um, and it was all, only all, for special land use. All I know is that the um, right? 2007 okay. rules, and I did a, a brief on that. I included Gary's brief. Uh, Mark Roberts' Mark brief, I put that all with the area about who has the final decision on it. I submitted it twice um, to the council, and um, you should have the, I'll try and pull it up again and get it to you, council chair. If you Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, yeah, go ahead. I, if I recall correctly, uh, Microphone, please. Microphone. Hey, I got it. Point of order. Nothing from the audience. Thank you. Turn on your microphone, please, councilman. Uh, Thank you. Uh, it didn't come to it, it didn't go all the way through I remember talking about I know I know we agreed We did not want to see every decision before the council But I could have sworn that special land use was voted on and only special land use But I could be mistaken. So I'll just go ahead and continue and again. I'm just but I I'm just I'm just thinking here, my thoughts out loud here. Mr. Fakori I, I, I think the issue here is if it was brought by a non-owner if it was brought by somebody else then it's it, you know, not it, valid. It should have stopped right at the clerk's office or at the counter when it was applied for. 
uh, application. And it does not go before the process. clerk, just for, for disclosure. The clerk. Yes, my, my uh, mistake. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will repeat it. I don't. Um, I know disrespect to Mr. Figueroa. I apologize. This is now into the lawsuit issue that we have a separate representation by MMRMA. What happened at the Planning Commission Zoning Board? Um, so I'm just letting okay. you know I, so I won't I, I won't I won't talk about anyway. this, the zoning board. Thank you, Roger. All right, go ahead. Um, so Exhibit six shows that I sent your director a copy of the warranty deed showing the ownership of the property <laughs> um, With with no response exhibit seven shows that I sent the director, a copy of the Declaration of Restricted. Which director are you covenant? speaking about? Mr. Wetland. The whole building. Building? Director. Building, yes. Um, showing that there's a declaration of restricted covenant that's recorded on the property say, saying that nothing can be built on that property, at least without state approval. Okay. All right. Thank so. You. If you go to Exhibit 9. Is that past okay. Exhibit 1? Because I wasn't getting any response back on some of the, the emails, I had then submitted a, a FOIA to the FOIA department. <laughs> Where it says here, Dear Mayor, I hope all is well. As you know, I have a concern over the development of other businesses. Yes. So I reached out to the mayor because I, I received a response from the FOIA department. And the response was that there was no planning, no zoning, no permits on, on the site in the past 12 months. Wait, wait, can you start back? So if you go back to Exhibit A. Exhibit A? Eight. 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 But we, didn't, we saw Exhibit 9, so we skipped. Yes. I before, just, the page yeah. before. That's the, the page So the, the FOIA says, any and all documents regarding the development of 2405 Warren and 7018 Mayburn, Dearborn Heights, Michigan, 48127. A copy of the approved site plan, copy of the building permit, copy of the approval from planning board meeting within the past 12 months. And if you see above my name, the documents you requested, the FOIA, do not exist. To the best of my knowledge, information on behalf of no public records exist on October 23rd, 2024. And this may be set forth in the request detailed above MCL 15.23. In this event, they're not steadfast for the response. Okay. So what I'm asking for is an investigation on why this place is being built and why there's not a stop work order until they go through the proper procedure. And if they go through the proper procedure, because of the moratorium, they can't build. And I want to also bring to the council's attention the last exhibit. This is it exhibit 10? No, let's see. 13. So 13 is a car wash that's being built on Michigan Avenue. This is this is a property owned by the same property owner. This again was being developed without permits. My understanding that there was uh, something sent to the city to bring to their attention that they're building it without permits and then um, They they put a stop work order on the on the construction of the car wash But they allowed him to go through the process and go to planning basically a slap on the hand 
and ish get a per, uh, approval from planning to build the car wash. How in God's name did that happen when the moratorium specifically says no applications can be done? So not only one property, Council President, but two properties, same property owner, that is getting away with murder right under everybody's eyes. This has got to stop. I, I'm not here to fight a fight. It's not my fight. You guys are the body that regulate everything that goes on. My job is to bring to your attention. I've tried to memorialize it in this, this document here, everything that you need, but answers. Somebody has to answer. And the, the only thing I would uh, suggest is that there is a open council meeting and that these department heads are brought here to answer these questions. I, I can tell you right now, um, you know, keep in mind that the council is not brought forward anytime somebody's building or anything is happening. It just ultimately they go through the, you know, the channels and then the legislative body is just not there. We'll get it if they need some type of approval for most of the time. But, um, you know, to know if every single business is pulling their permits and if they're being operated the right way, um, you know, you, I can tell you, I, I have no idea that that was happening until you brought this forward to us. What I can also tell you is, and I'm not here to defend Mr. Watlin, but if Mr. Watlin, if somebody's working on something and he has no information that work is being done, you know, he's not driving around to seeing what construction is being done. And, you know, and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, he's ignoring things, but he could be out doing other things. Now, I, now that you have brought this to his attention, I'm going to have this conversation with them. I'm sure the mayor will probably have it to Roger or any of his council members here. Or if Mr. Watlin would like to speak, uh, or if he wants to hold off on his comments, he's also more than likely. But if, if Rick did want to speak, he can raise his hand because um, at this point, I don't know as to why, um, you know, the same business owner having two development has not pulled any permits. Um, and that's that unacceptable. Only permits, it is 100% unacceptable. President, he's under construction, under moratoriums. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do these things happen? And let me just tell you personally, uh, I've never seen somebody more respectful and knowledgeable than your billing director. He's been phenomenal. My yeah. job is just to give him information. It goes in his inbox. He chooses what he wants to do with it. It's up to him. Yeah. I, my job is not to get nasty with him. When he can't respond for whatever reason, and maybe his hands are tied, then I go and I do my own FOIA and then try to bring that to the mayor's attention. And then I was tried to set up that meeting, and that was canceled, so now I'm bringing it to you. Yeah, and I want you to know these chambers are open to everybody equally. So, I mean, you're, you'd never be denied to these chambers. And I'm sorry that you're going through this. And well, I mean, Council President, one of the things that you have to think about, if, if this is what's going on in Dearborn, it's a deterrent for people to come invest here because money goes where money's welcome. If they're f afraid that there isn't parity and I have to go through, spend 10000 on prints, 6000 for lawyer fees, application fees, and, and somebody can just walk in and say, here, I want this because I'm somebody. That's not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's unacceptable. Council Chair? Yep, go ahead. Any uh, comments from any council members? Oh, go ahead, go I ahead. A yep, go ahead, Councilwoman. Um, the property on Warren and Telegraph, was that, uh, that was a gas station before, right? Correct. Was that condemned? Yes. Then you're not supposed to be able to build another gas station there unless you go through a special process of replacing the dirt. That's that's correct. Now, they, they could have done it. I, I really don't know. I've never seen it because yeah. I've been watching it. Yeah. I drive that corner yeah. almost daily. So that's why they, they, this, the, Lara recorded the, the restricted covenant on there. So when somebody comes to try to build anything, especially a gas station, yes. they have to bring it up to a certain standard, and whether it's residential standards, I, I have no idea. Yeah, because I'm very familiar with this. My cousin was involved in gas stations, and he would talk about how they got condemned. And the gas station, unfortunately, across the street would be throwing a party because they knew they had to go out, their competition had to go out of business because their property was condemned. And, you know, he explained to me the process of trying to bring it back to where you could use it again and put a gas station there, but most of the time you can't. And correct me if I'm mistaken, Madam Clerk, and I don't mind to cut you off, Councilwoman. But miss, correct me if I'm mistaken, there was a gentleman that once came on when we were on Zoom, and it was when I first got on council. He lived in Northville. He was buying the play. He was buying it, and he was supposed to, like, he came before the council for something. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, three years ago, uh, maybe four. And you probably, I don't know. I don't forget things, but 
I, I do recall having this conversation, and I think it was when it was Councilwoman Manolowski Maxwell was the councilwoman at the time, council chairwoman at the time. But I do recall us having something come before us. They needed the approval from the council, yep. and and it passed. And people were like, "Heck yeah!" Like we were gonna, they were gonna develop this. But this was a long time ago. Um, and this was from a gentleman that lived in Northville. Like I, I remember very briefly, but that was the last that I've heard about this. And then I heard that nobody was, nobody cared for it anymore. So I don't, I really don't know. We don't know anything. I guess the last so. time this came before us was four years ago. Understood. Yeah. Uh, Council, uh, Council President, sure. just in close, I just want to say one thing. Um, you have your packages in front of you. Exhibit 11 is something I don't want to stay on the record, but I want you guys to take a look at it because it's something that I think is very, very serious. I mean, I'd like you to state it on the record. If, I mean, you brought it here and we've opened up everything. You might as well state it. All right, so as soon as I started uh, poking the bear, um, all of a sudden there were some repercussions. So Eagle, uh, which is a, 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 a state agency, was called out to one of my other locations to do an investigation. And you? On, on, on my property. Oh. Eagle also said that they were contacted by the city of Dearborn Heights on Tony's car wash. Why? I don't know. There's a closure report on there. The city has a copy of it. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're looking for something for whatever reason. And I, so I don't know what the retribution's about. Then I also had... Um, a customer come to me and said that an employee was told by the administration that I was under federal investigation. And if that's the case, if that's what they're telling people, then, and that leaks into the street, and that's why I didn't want to put it on a record, but um, sorry, and I'll explain that? a little bit more. This came from a customer that, you know, obviously it, it will hurt somebody's business, but I just want the city council to know, somebody who's had um, knowledge of this, if there's an investigation going on, God wouldn't know about it. So the fact that it's being said, that means somebody told them to say it, and that isn't right. You know, I'm, All I'm trying to do is keep everybody's feet to the fire. And look, I can tell you, Mr. Fakori, that's unacceptable. I'm sorry that that happened to you. But I can tell you firsthand, I just shared at the last city council meeting, I walked into the grocery store and I was just said, Immediately, I was being painted as this very bad person while everybody else was being victimized. Uh, we cannot contain or control what others are going to state and say. But I can tell you, um, you know, I know I'm not a bad person, and I know that you're not a bad person. You. And, you know, people at the ultimately are going to say what they want to say, uh, but it's going to be on individuals to be able to be the bigger and better person to know they're only causing fitna and haram and trying to harm people's, you know, culture mm -hmm. and, and, and their presence. It's just unfair and ugly and spiteful. Council President, the reality is typically things like this come from the top and trickle down, and that's unacceptable. I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I, you know what? Councilman Malowski waxel was not all done, so I want you to finish. Well, yeah, because I was going to say I do recall that, too. That's how I knew about the process, because I talked to my cousin after that meeting. I'm trying to recall the exact details, um, but I do remember once it's condemned, it cannot be a gas station again. You know, the, the land is condemned, and I've never seen them do anything to it because it's been on my radar since somebody mentioned it when yeah. I was on council, and I watched that corner often. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Councilwoman? No. Councilman Constant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fakuri, for Thank coming. You. I was involved, uh, or represented somebody who was involved with litigation regarding that station and some others years ago with Carl Knight. Originally, yes. there was a was a BP where the Tim Hortons is, and there was a, was it a Clark? Oh, you're going way back. Sitco. Sitco. And, oh, yeah. my God, it was. Uh, uh, Guys, no side comments, please. One of the parties involved, and in, but, yeah, it was that the, when Ron Amon was economic development director, we got the Tim Hortons in, and that gas station was torn down. Um, I don't know if the tanks are still there or no. what, what the situation is. No, but, it's, got, it's got a closure um, report. Uh, uh, I see Carol Knight's signature here. On yes, some believe of these. it or not, he's still alive. By the way, no, oh, he's—I I thought he passed away of some. No, he's in the—he's in the hospital. <clears throat> but anyway, that—that that, there, there's been a lot of problems with that property, and um, we need to be careful on what we do before anybody uh, develops it. Well, look, it's—it's it's a great corner. 
And <coughs> if, if, it, if it allows the development of a gas station, then so be it. That's something that we, everybody has to live with. But if it doesn't, then it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. There's a big station right across Telegraph that yes. was owned by Ray Havelin on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm going to have Councilman Saab and then Councilman Ahmad. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, Mr. Fokori, yes. you still have some questions from some of the council members. Councilman Saab, Mr. Fokori, regarding this, uh, um, this site with the station on the corner, um, you said that when you requested from the city permits, plans, checks, whatever, nothing was provided in a FOIA? Correct. Uh, do you know what the lot limit to be off of when you build a property? Setbacks from sidewalks on a commercial lot? Or? Well, I mean, typically uh, there's setbacks, side yards and rear yard, front yard setbacks, but uh, if zoning board allows you a zero lot line building, then you can do it. I just don't, from what I, from what I know they're building a zero lot line. Um, do, what, is there the minutes from that meeting? Because I was upon the planning commission, and I don't even remember the building being on that side of the... Uh, well, I contacted the uh, the planning board and asked if they, to, to verify, has any applications been submitted the past 12 months and that like, location, they, they said no. So, but it, it, whether, whether it was submitted or not, the, the moratorium is in place, right. right? So even if they got their approval 13 months ago, they would have to reapply, just like the car wash. So the car wash applied, was denied, applied, was denied applied was denied they got a permit to build and were able to reapply under the moratorium which should have never happened same property owner then my other question is for you um have you checked with the state of michigan regarding the the restrictions on the deed i did okay, I, yeah, I was valid? able to, to ex extract that information that i gave to you guys and this is the most up-to-date the state gave you that's what i got yeah okay all right, thank you. Yep. Uh, Councilman Ahmad. Thank Councilman you. Sarah, are you done? I'm all set. Thank, thank you, Councilor Chair. Mr. Fakuri, regarding Exhibit 11 that you just mentioned, did you receive anything back yet or still? No, they, they requested a 10 day extension. 10 day extension. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other uh, members of the council? Mm. Seeing none, we're going to end this study session, go into a quick five minute, re three minute recess, and then we'll start our regular city council meeting.